Jigs really don't have to be very fancy to do very precise work. And this is a case in point. This jig was hastily put together out of scraps of material, some old two by fours, a piece of MDO. And what the purpose of this jig is going to be is to take a piece of walnut like this, a relatively small piece, but a piece that's fairly distorted, not of uniform thickness at all, and render one surface flat. And that'll be very important to us because this piece is too wide to fit on our eight inch jointer. And if you were to run this through the planer, some of the distortion would simply be pressed out by the rollers. I'm not so sure I'd like to run that through the thickness planer anyway. You could have a nail in there, you could have varnish, glue, and that would just take the edge off, my, off the knife of the thickness planer. I think a carbide router bit would be a lot more suitable. It's also a short piece. You could get snipe on one end and run it through a thickness planer. A thickness planer also tends to, it tends to flatten the board as it's going through where this won't. This will take the highs off evenly. So the deformity springs back at the other end. You got it. Well, what we're going to do is, is clamp this between these straight rails. In this case, the one edge that droops uh, pretty extremely will shim a little bit. And secure it in place with a bunch of wedges. The router itself is mounted on a piece of half inch MDO and it's going to span the two rails. So it's going to be, the bit is going to be hovering over the work. On the rail it has two blocks on the bottom. They just limit the range of motion so that I can't run the bit into this rail or into this one. It also has two stop blocks on the end and that, that's my stop forward. What I like to do to start this process is to find the high spot of the, of the board. In this, in this situation, it's, it's this corner. This corner is probably three-eighths of an inch higher than over here. So what I like to do is zero that out right on top of the board and then set this depth to about an eighth of an inch. Then I'll start at a low point and slowly work my way until I work that, that high spot off the board. And it'll probably take three passes to complete this board. I'll show you how that's done. What do you think, John? I'm pretty happy. This is a good flat surface now, and it's one we can reference off of. Mm -hmm. And so if we flip this thing over and remount it, we can make both sides perfectly parallel. Now I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do it differently than you did, and try to avoid some problems. For one, <laughs> for one I'm going to put on this apron so I don't get sprayed with the uh, the black walnut dust, which is a terrific dye, by the way. And uh, the other thing I want to do, uh, you may have noticed, uh, the audience may have noticed, that the as a router bit, as you tried to guide it by hand, you would often skip and leave little buttressed areas that you had to come back and mm -hmm. get. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think part of that is just because of the difficulty of controlling the bit, which is 
uh, cycling around, it can't decide which cutting facet to will predominate, and so it jerks a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is take the trouble to clamp on a fence and make my passes in orderly established oh, rows. Oh, I see. You're going to put a fence under the under the rail to it, guide on this fence. Exactly. And then and you'll I, move it each time. It's clearly going to take more time, but on the other hand, I'm not going to have to go back and, sure. and clean up. Now, at this point, the the board is pretty flat, so I think we don't have to remove more than maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so. Mm -hmm. So I'll take the router, check that it's seated. Okay, there's at the surface. I'll adjust the depth rod so that it'll cut an additional sixteenth. Now I'm going to make the first pass down this edge, and then in subsequent passes, I'm going to use a uh, a fence that I'll mount on it. But for the first pass, that's not required because I already have a fence as part of this jig. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let me proceed. On this first pass, I'm feeding the bit in the same direction that it wants to go. The fence is on my left, and this action of the router bit is drawing that fence tightly against the jig. On subsequent passes, I push the router away from myself, which draws the fence on the right tight to the jig. Okay, well, it looks pretty, pretty nice, good. Right? It's right. pretty good. I would say it looks excellent. Very, very nice. Yeah, I think this side would compare favorably with uh, items done in a planer. Mm -hmm. So let's break it out. Ugh. There we go. Ah, I left a little bit of a ridge on the edge. I guess that's a job for a pocket knife. Sure. But uh, otherwise, it's very flat, very smooth, and the planer knives weren't damaged had this been varnished or had this had a nail in it. So the, the interesting thing I find about this type of jig is that uh, I have, and I know you have, mm -hmm. done jobs where entire workbenches can be surfaced using this type of technique, where simply two parallel rails are established and the router does the rest of the work. It's just an work. oversized jig, that's right. Yeah. It does the same, same job. Another thing this jig can do with just a slight modification, by putting two little cove cuts on each of these rails, the router will follow that belly cut and actually cove out the seat portion of a chair. 